Imagine one day suddenly experiencing unbearable pain. You go to the doctor only to receive devastating news. I was shocked to hear that Steve had inoperable cancer. We just sat on the bed and held each other and just cried. You look to your doctors to explain what's killing you, only to learn that they don't know. We essentially explained to him that you're going to die. And um, all we can do for you at this point is to make you comfortable. And you realize your life is quickly slipping away. I had a family reunion at my brother's house. We all got together for a dinner. And I was thinking at the dinner, man, this might be the last time I see everybody. In May of 2008, Steve Sluter, an active and otherwise healthy electrician, began losing weight. Three months later, he left work early because of severe stomach pain. Steve was urged to go to the doctor. When I went to the urgent care because of my pain, I spent the whole day there, and they were, the doctor, it was a lady, she was very concerned about the pain, and she ran all kinds of tests, and uh, she couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, and she wanted me to go to a, a hospital that night and have a CAT scan. Steve and Julie went to a nearby San Diego hospital, but the doctors there simply prescribed pain medication and sent Steve home. Finally, the desperate couple made their way to Scripps Memorial Hospital in La Jolla, California, where the doctors performed a CAT scan, and the news was overwhelming. They said it was cancer of unknown origin. It was lodged between my kidney and my liver, and it was inoperable. And I said, well, Doc, what's the bottom line? He said, you probably have four to six months left to live. I said, what? And Julie wasn't there, and she finally came in later, and I wanted to tell her, but I just didn't have the heart to break her heart like that to tell her. So, you know, I had the doctor tell her that, you know, I was going to die. And, uh, and we, I just felt horrible, you know, because I had just gotten married the week before, and, uh, you know, and then it was going to end soon. So I just felt horrible. I couldn't believe that in this day and age there was, they, you know, there was, they couldn't identify the cancer. With all the medical technology, it just seemed impossible to believe that they couldn't do anything for Steve. It, it, I was frustrated. After a battery of tests, doctors had no answers. Steve's case was diagnosed as a cancer of unknown primary origin. Regardless of whatever treatment that you, you use for them, more than likely um, the uh, overall survival is usually in the range of about three to six months. I was thinking maybe a month and I was watching my husband die. From October of 2008 to February of 2009, Steve's condition deteriorated quickly. He was losing weight rapidly and almost continuously in pain. Finally, at the urging and advice of relatives, the couple asked for additional help. It was then that Steve's physician referred them to Dr. Abadoy. When I saw him, he probably weighed at most maybe 100 pounds. I didn't think much could be done for him simply because of the fact that he was so sick. He'd been referred more so as a good candidate for uh, hospice rather than for treatment. And meeting him, meeting his wife, who during their first meeting, she was essentially in tears. And um, I looked around Steve and I, I said to Dr. Abadoy, well, I mouthed it to him, is there hope? And he just kind of, you know, shrugged his shoulders. Basically, from that moment, they were sending us home to, to have Steve die. Dr. Abadoy then conferred with Dr. Matthews, a Scripps pathologist, who looked at Steve's biopsy and began another series of diagnostic tests. I decided to turn to a molecular test that hopefully would uh, be more specific and give me a final diagnosis. Molecular diagnostics is a relatively new testing methodology that allows doctors to look at cells at a molecular level to diagnose disease. The technology is based on advances from the Human Genome Project and genomic profiling. Here at the San Diego-based Biotheranostics, Scientists who specialize in this field saw a real need for a molecular-based test that would make it easier and faster to determine the origin of cancers otherwise classified as uncertain or unknown. 
in these days of personalized medicine with uh, targeted therapeutic regimens depending on the cancer type, being able to uh, further delineate the type of tumor the patient has has a big impact. And as a pathologist, it's actually very exciting that we have this ability to do so. And we were all, you know, it finished a heavy day, we were all getting ready to go home, and then I get a call from Dr. Matthews. And he, He's literally a man. Could, he's literally screaming over the phone that he has the results in from the cancer type ID test, and that it looks like it might be of germ cell origin. What really is important to mention about that is that germ cell origin is 90 to 95 percent curable. Once I heard that, the next thing I wanted to do was to just hang up the phone and get in touch with Steve. One afternoon, I got a call from Dr. Avidoy and he said that he was really excited and really happy and he said that they thought that they had found the, the type of cancer it was and um, that it was 90% curable and they wanted us to get Steve into his office as soon as possible. I was so happy that day. Steve started treatment right away and immediately began his road to recovery. As Steve got better and better, he felt there was one more thing he needed to do. Steve came and visited us, and the clinical laboratory scientists who had actually run his sample, he hugged them, and they actually had tears in their eyes. Thanks again. I don't know how I can thank you, but thank you. I'm speechless right now because I know that uh, this test that we're running he was able to get the proper treatment. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you for saving my life. You know, you come to work every day and, and you, you put in your time and you work hard uh, as scientists. And a lot of times when you get in your car at the end of the day, you're not sure, you hope you got something accomplished. Well, that day we, we found out that we had accomplished something. In this age of personalized medicine, as more treatments are tailored specifically to disease types, the need for molecular diagnostic tests, such as the cancer type ID test, is increasing dramatically. In situations like, like this, like Steve's, where that one piece of information is what made the entire difference, um, I certainly would recommend this test. If it wasn't for the test, I wouldn't be here right now. There's hope out there for somebody that has cancer of unknown origin. There's real hope. <laughs>